Hello and welcome to this solid design tutorial on SolidWorks. We're going to be modeling this soldering iron here uh, and we're going to be looking at a couple of key techniques when we do it. So for solid creation we'll look at revolves, lofts, extrusions, and sweeps. Then for solid editing we can look at fillets and chamfers. And then we'll also look at some additional techniques such as reference geometry, mirroring, circular patterning, Boolean operations, and sketching techniques such as dimensioning and offsets. Um, now this is the first part of a two-part series. Uh, the second one's going to get a little bit more in-depth into um, detailing. And so this is what the second part will, uh, will end up creating. Um, we'll be, it'll be editing directly from the first part. Um, so you can watch them in a row. And for this one, we're going to be looking at appearance editing. So adding um, appearances to surfaces and bodies. Surface offsetting and copying. Surface splitting using split line. Uh, linear patterning and adding text to parts. Um, so if this is too basic for you, you can jump right to the next one. You can work through them both if you want. They'll be separate videos. But with that out of the way, let's just jump right into part one, basic solid modeling. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is a revolve for the handle. So to do this, we're going to create a sketch, put it on the front plane, and I'm just going to make sure that it starts at this point here. It's going to come up, over, this is going to come over from here, and then I'm going to do a spline, and I'm going to do a three-point spline starting at the bottom, here, and there. Now the next step is to dimension it, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to set these. The first dimension you set will not um, affect the actual size of the part, the window will scale accordingly. So 100, 10, I'm going to set this point to drop 30 down. It's going to come over one millimeter. 6.25. And now we can do some editing with this actual spline. So if you click on the spline, you'll see these kind of hidden lines show up, and these are curves that specify how the spline operates. I'm going to create a dimension. First, I'm going to move this around. As soon as you move it, it stops being invisible. And then I'm going to create a dimension here, 95 degrees. And then I'm going to create this dimension. I'm going to click on this point, this little dot at the end, and I'm going to make it vertical. So now this is going to be the widest it will ever be. And I'm just going to end the sketch. And then I'm going to revolve. Revolve boss base. I'm going to select the axis of revolution to be this point here. And there is our first body. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane offset from this face here. So that's under reference geometry. So I'm going to hit plane. I'm going to specify the surface and I'm going to say 11 millimeters from that surface. I'm going to create a plane. Now that I've done that, I can create a sketch on this plane. I'm going to go into this item here, this polygon, specify there are going to be three points, so I'm making a triangle. And I'm going to specify the middle of this triangle to be here. Now I'm going to come up. I'm going to specify the distance here as 40 millimeters. And now I'm going to set all of these edges to actually be construction geometry for construction. You can see I press shift to select them all for construction. And now because I don't want these to be straight lines, I want them to actually be curves. I'm going to go into arc, three point arc, and I'm going to select one, two, and then just out a little bit. Now, uh, you can see that this triangle I set isn't black. It turns black when it's completely uh, defined. And so to, to make sure that it's defined, you can see it can spin. To make sure it's actually defined, I'm going to select the top point and the middle point, uh, the center of the circle, and I'm going to make them vertical. And now this is fully defined. I can start defining this arc. And to do that, I'm just going to set the radius to 75. Now, I could repeat this process three times, or I could use a circular pattern. 
So here where it says linear sketch pattern, I'm going to switch that to circular sketch pattern. For the middle point, I'm going to select this middle. And then entities to pattern, I'm going to select this arc here. And I want three of them total. That three includes this first um, dot here, this first, this first arc. And then I'm going to hit check. And now you can see there are three uh, arcs centered around this point. They all have 75 millimeter uh, radius and I am done. Now what I'm eventually gonna do is I'm gonna create a loft from this bottom face up to this triangle arc here. But creating a loft from a circular, a circular uh, profile up to this kind of pointed profile can be difficult. So I'm gonna need some guide curves and to create those, I'm gonna create another sketch on this surface, another triangle, starting in the middle, going out to this point, and I'm just going to make sure this point lies on this circle here. And once again, to fully define it, I'm going to make sure these two are vertical. Now it's fully defined. I can stop drawing. I'm going to now add some more construction geometry. So I'm going to go into features, reference, axes, and I'm going to select two points of vertices. It would also do it automatically. It would select this once I started picking, but I'm going to select this middle point here and the middle point of this here and to create this central axis. And I can just drag this down to be longer because I know this is going to be my whole, the center of my whole part. Now what I want to do is create some guide curves from this point out to this point here for my um, loft to follow, and they just have to be straight lines, nothing, nothing too complex. So to do that, I'm going to go sketch, 3D sketch, I'm going to select the line, and then I'm going to click this point here, out to this point there, escape, that's it, done. I'm going to do it two more times, from this point to this point, and from this point to this point. And you can see this isn't blue, this is blue, not black. It's because I didn't specify correctly that it's on this point. Instead, I just said it was on this line. So I'm gonna fix that. Coincident, now it's black. I know I did it properly. I can exit the sketch. And now I'm ready to loft between this face and this sketch up here. So features, lofted boss base, what loft does is it sweeps, it creates solids between two profiles. So the first profile is this bottom curve here. The second profile is my arced triangle. And then in order to specify how these points are connected, I'm going to use the guide curves that I created. There's one, there's two, and here is three. That looks good. I'm going to hit the check. Next, I'm going to hide this geometry. Oops. Hide this construction geometry. Hide this sketch. And now I'm going to just do a simple extrude off of this face. So I'm going to go sketch on the face, convert entities, and it's going to create the outline of that profile as its own sketch. I'm going to go into features, extrude, and I'm going to extrude this 16 millimeters. So next, I'm going to soften these edges with a fillet. So to do that, I'm going to hit fillet. I'm just going to select one, two. I'm going to change the fillet parameters to 2.5 millimeters. Three, four, and the final two over here. Five, six. And now I've softened those, softened those edges a little bit. Next, I'm going to create a cutout in this top area using a sketch. I'm going to do another polygon. This time it's going to have six sides. I'm going to make a hexagon. Out however much, it's fine. Now I'm going to make this horizontal to align it. And then I'm going to make this radius, or this diameter, excuse me, 36. Great. Now, exit. I'm going to cut using that sketch. 
1.5 millimeters down. Not very big. Boom. There's that. Now once again, I'm going to sketch on this top face here. I'm going to do another polygon, another triangle. So three points. I'm going to select here. I'm going to come down. Make sure that this point and this point are vertical. And then I'm going to specify this distance, 22.5 millimeters. Once again, I'm going to use this as construction geometry for construction. And I'm going to make some arcs again. So from one point, two points here, I'm going to specify this diameter as 25 millimeters. And I'm once again going to do a circular sketch pattern so I don't have to do this three times. Entities to pattern, this arc, three of them. Ta -da. And now I'm going to cut this seven millimeters down. I got all of these measurements using uh, just some calipers and measuring my, the actual part. Now we're going to create fillets at each of these points to smooth out this curve a little bit. Uh, it's currently 1.25 millimeters. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to keep that. Um, and now I'm going to do another revolve for the tip. So sketch, I'm going to select this front plane that I had before. Um, and I'm actually going to use section view to cut away so I can actually see this bottom edge here. So we'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at specifically. I've cut using the front plane um, half of this away so I can specifically see where this bottom edge is as I'm sketching. So I'll go back to this view and I'm going to create now this, um, this metal tip that the soldering iron uses to solder. I'm going to first draw out everything and then I'm going to dimension it. Perfect. So there's that. Now I'm going to start dimensioning. Okay, so you can see it's now all turned black. That means I've done this correctly and everything is, um, is dimensioned properly. I can check out of that, exit, and now I can revolve using this line as the center line. And I can turn off the section view, and you can see I've now created this tip for the soldering iron. I'm now going to create what will look like a chamfer, but I'm actually going to do it by creating solid rather than removing it from this face down to this face. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to need to make a plane. So reference plane. I'm going to use this axis as the first uh, reference to create it. And the second reference I'm going to use is this point here. And it will now create a plane that goes through this axis and through that point. I'm going to just drag it out here. And now I'm going to sketch on it. I'm going to do this again where I hide everything away. And I'm going to make a line from this point down to this edge, over and up. Real simple. I'm going to set this distance to be 45 degrees. And that's everything you need to do. Everything else is set in that um, sketch. Now I'm going to extrude this, this sketch. And I'm going to specify direction one up to surface, and I'm going to select this surface. And then direction two up to surface, and I'm going to select this surface. And when I tried this the first time to merge it and then uh, circular pattern it, it didn't work so well. So, and, and the reason was I was using up to surface um, and then circular patterning, and they, there wasn't the same surfaces to connect to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck merge result. What this is going to do is it's going to create the solid, but it's going to create it as a separate body. You can see now we have two different bodies. So when I go into circular pattern, I can use as the direction this axis I created earlier, and I'm going to select bodies and this body. It's going to just create two extra bodies. So now this part has four total bodies. This main area that I'm going to hide, there it goes. 
and the three bodies we just created. I can hide this plane. And now what we need to do is combine these bodies, turn them into a single part. So I'm gonna look up, this is a very valuable tool that you should be using, this search bar. Make sure that you're under commands, that's what's most helpful for me. So I can type in combine, oops, combine. I know that's the, that's the uh, function I'm looking for. Make sure that I'm in add, and I'm just gonna select the four bodies. One, two, three, four. And now they're all a single body again. So that's great. I've created this, what looks like a chamfer, but is actually a body addition. Um, and now I can start working on the bottom section. So I'm gonna start real simple here, front plane. I'm gonna create a sketch. It's gonna be down here at the bottom. Oops, it's gonna be down here at the bottom. I'm gonna use this again, just it's helpful to do the section views. And I'm gonna create two lines. One line over, and one line down. I'm going to, I'm actually gonna turn off that section view, that wasn't helpful. I'm going to specify this edge and this line I drew are tangent. Um, you can see these are, this line is defined, this line is defined, but this point is still blue, if you can tell. Um, and that's because I can still slide this distance so to specify that, I'm going to change this dimension to 3.5 millimeters. And done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is under features, revolve. Now you may be saying you can't revolve this. This is not a closed shape. Uh, that's not actually the case. You just need to use thin feature. So I'm gonna specify thin feature as one millimeter. And what thin feature does is it will, um, create an offset from these lines to create a solid. I'm gonna specify the axis of revolution as that previous axis we created. And you can see now it's created a one millimeter offset from these lines and done. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look straight up this hole that I've created and I'm gonna create a sketch inside of this hollow area. And I'm gonna do it and then mirror it several times. So here's gonna be my sketch. I'm gonna go up, over, up, over, down, and back. And now I'm gonna specify these dimensions. Now I've got this sketch. I'm going to specify these two lines. Oops, I'm still, in, I'm still in fillet. I'm gonna specify these two lines are gonna be construction. And the reason for that, oops. The reason for that is I'm going to mirror this. So I'm gonna select all of these edges. I'm going to go mirror entities here. And I'm gonna mirror about this line. There it is. Now I'm gonna, oops, I didn't mirror this. Mirror across this line. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm actually just gonna drag because that would, would have been an easier way to do it the first time mirror entities, and I'm gonna mirror across this line. Ta-da! Now I've created this, this shape, which is going to be our cable. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is create the route that the cable is gonna take. So another sketch, oops, I didn't deselect that area, so it decided it wanted to go there. I'm gonna create another sketch, I'm gonna put it on the front plane. I'm gonna make sure that this cable goes from where I drew the sketch down far enough to get completely past this hollow area. And then I'm going to create a spline. Um, and this is kind of just whatever you want. It's, it's gonna be a wire. Doesn't really matter how you draw this. I'm gonna draw it like that. I'm gonna specify these points to be, let's say pointing over here. This is gonna be there. I do want this to be tangent so that it doesn't just immediately jut off in a direction in a weird way but that looks pretty good for me. This is the only time you're gonna see a blue line in my sketches um, because it doesn't really matter what this looks like. This is just kind of for fun. I'm gonna exit and then I'm gonna go into features, sweep, and what sweep does is it takes a profile. It's already selected the path as the path I just created and now it just wants a profile. It's gonna sweep this profile. Give it a second, there we go, across that path and 
ta-da, there is your cable. You can kind of see this is what a cable looks like. So now we can start working on the plug. To start this, I'm going to create some more reference planes. So starting with 17.5 millimeters offset from this, and then another one, 20 millimeters offset from this edge that I've created from the sweep. All right, so now I'm gonna start sketching out some uh, profiles for lofting. I'm gonna start by finding the middle of this uh, plane of the end of this cable, and then I'm gonna make a couple of centered rectangles. So this first rectangle is gonna be vertical 10 millimeters, and then horizontally 12.5. And then I'm going to fill it each of these edges as well. 2.5 looks good. Or 1.25 rather looks good. So I'm going to do that for the first. Then in that new plane that I've created, the construction geometry or the uh, reference geometry, I'm going to make another. It's going to be 14 by 11.5. Again, filleting each of these sketch edges. <clears throat> there we go and then one more um, at the third plane we've created this one's going to be bigger it's going to be 20 millimeters by 12.5 there we go and fill at the edges again Great. Now that we have that, I'm going to need to make some um, guide curves for my loft uh, because otherwise this will end up lofting in a very curvy and weird way. I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane. There it is. Um, and now I'm going to draw a couple lines from the outer edges of the um, plug that I'm going to then loft through. So there, I'm going to go out and up. Now I want to make this this line here uh, perpendicular um, to my top face, and to do that, I'm actually going to convert that entity. Then I'm going to turn it into a construction geometry, and then I'm going to make a relationship by holding down shift between those two perpendicular. Now I can create a fillet. First, I'm going to dimension actually. 0.75 millimeters. Now I can create a fillet here. There we go. Um, and then I'm just gonna make sure, you can see that this can move around a bit. Uh, that's not good. And you can tell that because it's not black. So what I'm gonna do, again, by hitting that point, shift, and then that line, pierce is the relationship I want. And now the, that grayed out line from the sketch goes straight through that point. Same thing here, gonna make sure it's pierced. And now all of these lines are black, it's fully defined. Um, and all I need to do now is mirror it. So to do that, I'm going to create a line from the midpoints of the sketches. I'm going to turn it into construction, and then I'm just going to mirror entities about that line. Three, four, there we go. Select the mirror line, and good. Great. So now I have those two guide curves that I can use when lofting. So, features, loft. <laughs> it's trying to loft between the guide curves because I still have those selected. I'm going to select one by one the three profiles I created. So loft stuff doesn't have to be between just two profiles. You can have as many as you want. I'm having a hard time picking this. Come on. There we go. And three. And now I need to select those two lines that I created as guide curves. One by one, I'm going to select each segment of these lines and hit check. And now this line. One, two the fillet and four oops four there we go and now it's following those guide curves that's what I want done so there is the start of my plug now the next thing I'm going to do is just sketch uh, this face I'm going to extrude it a little bit farther so convert entities and then extrude it's going to go up 
15 millimeters. There we go. Um, and now I'm going to make the prongs. So I'm going to create two rectangles. First, I'm going to find the middle line, actually, so that I know exactly where to put them. Then centered rectangles, one, two. I'm going to create some dimensions here. So from the insides, or from the outsides, it's going to be 14 millimeters. From the insides, it's going to be 11.5. And then from the midpoint of that center line I created, it's going to be 5.5. I actually made a mistake here. It should be 11. There we go. Uh, now you can see these can still move around um, because even though the total width is specified, each individual lines isn't. So I'm going to select those two with shift and make them equal. There we go. Now I'm going to specify the height six millimeters and I, again I'm going to make these equal. I could also do this with a collinear constraint uh, selecting two lines and then making them collinear. Either of those would work. Now I'm going to extrude each of these sketch profiles. One, I need to select this other one. Two, there we go. And extrude those up. By seven millimeters. Strike 12.5. Great. Now I'm going to, oh, not fill it. I'm going to chamfer these edges. Um, each of these four, oh, not the face. Clear selections. Oh, that's too big. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, one millimeter. That looks good. Uh, plugs have a little bit of a chamfer at the prongs. Um, go take a look and see for yourself. So 45 degrees, one millimeter, there we go. Now I'm going to sketch a circle around the midline of this face. I'm gonna make the circle 2.5 millimeters. I'm gonna make it offset 2.5 millimeters from that edge. So 1.25 from the end of the circle to the line. Uh, and I'm just gonna make sure this is fully defined by selecting that midpoint selecting the midpoint of that line there. I'm actually going to sketch it out explicitly and making it vertical. There we go. Now, extruded cut. And I'm going to extrude up to surface, that surface, and cut all the way through. There we go. Now we have, I actually think maybe this could be a little bit longer. So I'm going to edit this here. Make it 15. There we go. Uh, and everything else will update automatically. I'm going to hide these planes, and I'm going to do just one more thing. I'm going to sketch on this face. I'm going to offset this face by 2.5 millimeters. Oop, I didn't hit the check mark of the offset, so it didn't do it. <laughs> offset this face 2.5 millimeters. There we go. And now I'm going to extrude that face downwards. Oh, boy. There it is. There it is. 2.5 millimeters, and once I've done that, I'm going to fillet the edge. Where's fillet? There it is. 2.5 millimeters. So there you have it, um, a basic introduction to SolidWorks modeling, uh, covering kind of the key essentials, and part one of the two-part series on modeling this uh, soldering iron. Uh, feel free to check out the next one, or... Try it out for yourself. Thanks very much for watching and happy modeling.